Hello and welcome to another edition of Leaders Room with the ICLIF Leadership and Governance Center. My name is Rajiv and I'm here today with Dr. William Bankston, a professor of sociology at St. Joseph's College in New York and president of the Society for Scientific Exploration, which is a group of scientists that explore anomalies. His area of specialization includes research methods and statistics. For over 25 years, Bill has been doing research into anomalous healing and has numerous publications in scientific and other journals. Bill, great to have you with us. Welcome to the Leaders Room. Bill, I guess the first question I have is, you're known to have cured uh, cancer simply by using hands-on healing. So tell me about that. What, what, is, what does that entail? What is it all about? Well, the, the healing of cancer with hands-on healing came about many, many years ago when we were, I was actually studying a, a, a psychic who had turned into a healer. And I come to all of this from a skeptical point of view. I don't, I don't default to belief in any way at all. And I started to design studies to see if, if, if he was able to do psychic stuff. And he actually morphed into a, into a healer quite uh, spontaneously. And the, the urge to go to cancer came not from any reasoned thought. Uh, but rather just trying, putting your hands on and see what happens. And, and it turns out that in this particular healing system, uh, malignant tumors or malignant growths uh, respond very quickly and dramatically, and benign growths don't. And so I was drawn simply uh, trial and error, nothing more than trial and error. Let's play and find out what works and what doesn't work. So it's as simple as that? Just put your hands there and uh, the cancer goes away? Well, it's it's a little bit more than that. Um, but when when we were when we started clinically, we were literally we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how long to do it, um, and we'd go around. I was actually the first person that, that this guy, his name was Bennett Mayrick, uh, ever fixed. Uh, and we were sitting in a kitchen one day, and I was in particular pain from my back. I had had chronic back pain for years, and he was telling me of all of these things that neither of us believed, uh, psychic things. And uh, he was telling me that when he was doing readings, the person he was doing a reading on, uh, he would get the physical symptoms on his own body, and that person was claiming to have a reduction in their pain. And neither of us believed that, and I said, well, come on over and put your hands on my back. He came over and put his hands on my back, and my chronic back pain I, was the last pain I ever had. And, and so we then started to go around, what happens if we do this, what happens if we do that? Um, so we did literally hundreds of people uh, uh, by trial and error, and we found certain patterns, certain things worked and certain things didn't. Uh, when I eventually moved into the lab to try to do this under controlled conditions, I simply went with the strength of what we had seen playing around without, uh, without knowing what we were doing. Uh -huh. And so cancer, since it responded, I went in and started doing control studies on cancer. So since you mentioned lab conditions and controlled studies, so there is a scientific basis for this. Oh, th there's, uh, I, there's a scientific basis in terms of data. Uh, I don't know that you could say there's a scientific basis in terms of understanding how it works. So if we talk about does something happen, uh, I would say yes, there's no question at this point. I've done many, 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 many experiments in many, many places uh, on all sorts of things. I've done them on animals and plants and We've, we, we've tried just about anything you could think of and under extremely tight conditions. And there, it's, it's not even an interesting question whether healing happens. The question really from a scientific point of view is what's the mechanism and how do we try to explain it? And that we can argue all day and all night and the bottom line would be I would be speculating. Um, and that's really not that different from uh, other scientific areas. So nobody's gonna run around and say there's no such thing as gravity. But if you put 10 physicists in a room, they're going to get into a fight over what, how it works. So I, I think at this point, if, if you know the data, it's not interesting whether healing happens. But how does it happen? Where does it come from? How do you turn it on? How do you turn it off? What does it work on? What's the mechanism? These things are got many more lifetimes to go got of it. Uh, playing with so, it. So, so, so science now confirms that this is happening but the how and why is still unknown. Yeah, completely. Yeah. So, so just in mice experiments, I have 13 experiments in five different medical schools. Um, and I go from lab to lab in part 
uh, because they have different facilities and they're working on different projects. So in, in a way, I'm following the early work that we did uh, clinically. We're going to try to find out what happens. I'll try this on anything to see mm -hmm. the more data, the better. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's no such thing as bad data. Right. Uh, we simply learn new stuff whenever we try experiments. Right, right. very good. Uh, so uh, for those people who are able to heal, does the mind or human intention, attention, or thought have anything to do with it? Well, among the experiments I've done, uh, I've done uh, experiments on intention, I've done experiments on attention, I've done experiments with EEGs, uh, so we've hooked people up to synchronize EEGs to see what happens when they try to heal. We've played with functional MRIs uh, where the healer is in the MRI and the healer is out of the MRI. We've tried to then reverse the, the process. And I, there is, something is happening in the brain but I don't know, I mean, that's for sure, but I don't know whether it's the brain itself which is the real impetus behind healing. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's still unknown. Um, certainly, if you're going to undertake a healing experiment and you're going to, uh, I tend to work with skeptical, inexperienced volunteers, and if you're going to, to spend hour after hour in a lab putting your hands around a cage of mice, or a cage uh, petri dish, or uh, uh, whatever we're doing in, in the lab protocol, uh, you have the intention to do it, but intention is not the same thing as belief, and it's not even necessarily the same thing as attention. Uh, attention, it would be something more akin to focus, and healing doesn't seem to be related at all to focused attention. But you can't do anything without intention. Okay, so, so, so you're saying that intention, you have to have the intention to heal, uh, but we don't know yet whether that is a, uh, necessarily a prerequisite or? Well, I don't know that you could do an experiment without some intention. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you were a volunteer in one of my experiments and I say, oh, would you come and, and do this? And I give you a protocol and I give you a cage of mice and I give you whatever you have to do and you have to show up every day for a month. Mm -hmm. Well, then you, you have to have some intention to go through this. Uh, but you, you, that's very different from saying, I believe this is gonna work. And it's also very different from you saying, I need to be focused on healing. I don't think that healing itself I don't think the instigation of healing comes from the conscious mind willing something. I don't think it's anything like a psychokinetic effect. I think rather healing is, has its own set of laws, patterns, and such, which we still need to, to try to uncover. So I'm curious, you met somebody who was a healer, and you said you were a skeptic. Yeah. And what did you have to do to become a healer yourself? Well, uh, to become a healer, uh, I, I have to say that I'm still skeptical. Uh, that doesn't mean that healing doesn't happen, but I'm skeptical of any simple answers to how it works or why it works. I'm not a reductionist by nature, and so if you say, oh, I have it figured out, this is it, I'm gonna sit there and go, I'm skeptical, I, I need to test it. And so in, in the 35 plus years that I've been doing this, uh, whenever I think I have something figured out, I still need to skeptically take it to the lab, gather data, and find out if I'm on the right track. And I, I'm not often on the right track. Uh, this is a pretty complex problem to solve. But you've clearly healed a lot of things and people. Oh, sure. And so do you have any special abilities? I don't know that I have any special abilities. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I've never thought of myself as a healer. Um, not even for a second, although if, if, you, if I'm going to do an experiment, sometimes I'll use me as the healer. Uh, sometimes I use uh, faculty members, sometimes I use students, sometimes it, it depends on the circumstance. But I, I don't know that I have anything special going on. But the fact that you've healed so many, uh, you've cured so many mice and healed so many people. Yeah, uh, well not, healing happens. Right. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm simply responding to your do I have something special? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I, have, if I have anything special. And it actually turns out to be a, a pretty intriguing question about who is special and who isn't. Uh, I haven't found anyone in my experiments unable to do this, but I don't know the source of their being able to do it. Is it a technique that I teach? Is it visualization? Is it mindfulness? Is it intention? Is it 
lack of attention, I don't, I don't know. But so far, um, it turns out a lot of people can do this. What I don't know is whether I'm just giving them permission to try something crazy. So you're saying, uh, which leads me to the next question, uh, you, you, you do these experiments sometimes with yourself as a healer and sometimes with other people, yeah. and they are generally skeptical. Oh, yeah. And so ordinary people can learn this and well, do this. I, I, I don't, I've never used a believer uh, for the simple reason that believers scare me. Mm -hmm. um, believers have a tendency to try to defend their beliefs. And I, I'm not interested in defending beliefs. Uh, I don't know enough <laughs> to have too many beliefs to try mm -hmm. to defend. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm playfully trying to follow the data. Uh, so I don't have anybody who I've tested who can't do it, and then I train them, and then they can do it. So I don't have any good data that would indicate some sort of pre-post. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, but you, 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 you have a training method. I have a training method. Uh, so what I'm asking is that uh, can ordinary people uh, you know, attend your training yeah. and do some of the things? Well, ordinary people certainly have attended it and, and they do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I'm just making kind of a, a quibble here as to what the source of their healing ability is. Uh, but I, I give a certain number of workshops a year uh, where people come and they learn the techniques that, I've essentially, that I essentially use in my experiments. Uh, and I've, I've trained uh, hundreds of people to do this. Uh, those who continue and to take it seriously are off doing very interesting things. Uh, they're, they're off anecdotally, not under controlled lab conditions, but anecdotally, uh, we're having tremendous amounts of uh, healings in very, very interesting areas. So what's your one message to pe ordinary people who don't know anything about this? Uh, can they use what you've learned, <laughs> excuse me, over 35 years, uh, to better their own development? Can they use the skills for, um, in any way to become better people, helping other people? The, the, the techniques that I uh, use and the techniques that I teach, and I don't have any proprietary techniques, they're all part in, in the public and people can see them and look them up and, and all of that. Uh, all the techniques that I use uh, seem to produce, some people have used it for healing, some people have used it uh, to be in circumstances that, that they find better for themselves. People use it for all sorts of selfish reasons and I encourage people uh, to follow their patterns, uh, follow, their, their, um, follow their bliss and, and use the techniques to help. Well, one last question. Uh, how many experiments have you done roughly and let's say how many uh, mice or other um, living things have you cured? In terms of experiments, I, I, I have 13 controlled experiments with mice. I have many uh, with cell cultures, some with plants. Um, I have many experiments with EEGs, with functional MRIs, with EKGs. Um, uh, in terms of how many mice total, many hundreds at this point. In terms of people, many hundreds. Hmm. Uh, so there have been many hundreds, and if you add all the people uh, who have learned the techniques and are out doing this, uh, you know, I, I don't know where they are and what, what they've been doing. And, and how many, of all the people that have, that have attended your programs, have learned the techniques, how many would you say are actually able to do this? I would say uh, the, the question is how many people seriously go after it mm -hmm. when I teach them. Uh, because my techniques aren't all that simple to learn. They take practice and mm -hmm. they take effort. And so I've heard, I don't know really comparative healing techniques, but I've heard there, there are healing claims that you can learn to be a great healer in 10 minutes. Mine isn't that way. Uh, mine takes effort, uh, some dedication, a whole lot of practice. And I would say Realistically, the, the percentage of people who take the workshops who become real practitioners are probably, who stick to it, 10%. I'm making up the number. Mm -hmm. uh, the others seem to get a lot out of it. They, they seem pretty happy about it. And I suspect that some of them use it in their daily lives. Uh, but I'm talking about a serious commitment to do it. Mm -hmm. And the people who have seriously committed uh, are doing pretty interesting things. Very good. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Very well. Thank you.